And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. I'm not here to waste your time. Everyone has access to the information. We just know how to analyze it better. Where else are you going to have this much ah! fun? You the man. You the man. Todd Father. Show me the money. What I've been doing. Had to trip on my bag. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Yeah. Had to trip on my bag. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Well, it's no trick to make a lot of money. All you want is to make a lot of money. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another live episode of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman. I'm Todd Butterfield. And we have a guest back here, Josh. How are you doing today, Josh? Doing great. Josh is a Crypto Private Client Group member. Uh, I've been a supporter of the channel and just happened to be in the area, so we decided why not swing on by, hang out with him. He's uh, actually got us to drink this Bud Light Orange, first time drinking live on the air, so who knows what we're going to talk about tonight. And we shall see. Tito's. <laughs> Shout out to Tito's. <laughs> Send us a few bottles. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we're going to talk about a Walmart partnership. Maybe you guys have heard, and no, it is not Ripple or XRP. I know that might be surprising to some of you, but that is not the case. On top of that, Vitalik says he may have solved the problem for Ethereum scaling. We've debated this a lot. This is part of the reason that Ethereum price has been falling, as well as ICO pressure with them selling, panicking during this bear market. Can this bring Ethereum back to the top? Will this fend off its protocol layer competitors? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. And a few more things. Of course, we'll have the Todd Father go over some charts over there using that proprietary software. And then uh, maybe we'll ask Joshua a question or two. I know he's just hanging out, but we'll put him on the spot and uh, see what he comes up with for you guys. So... Make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And instead of a Horizon giveaway today, we're going to do something a little different. If you guys watched it, we did do the interview with Four. Four did give us some coins. So instead of keeping them in full transparency, we're just going to give them back to you guys. So in the comment section below, leave your Four wallet address, your PHR wallet address. It is trading on Cryptopia. Leave that down there and you will be entered to win. I'm not sure what we're going to give away. Maybe $50 per winner for the next couple episodes as they did give us like $500 for to give back to you guys. So that should be pretty fun. So let's get this started. Let's jump right into this coin market cap and see what we got going on. Market cap up to $216 billion. Bitcoin dominance still around that 53% at 526 And really just been hovering in this trading range for the past few days. It's at 6,577. I think we hit about as what a high about as 6,800, and it's just been kind of trickling down the past few days. Not much going on. XRP was exploding on some of the news they had, and it has given all of it back almost down to 49 cents. Man, that one is a little rough. We'll have Todd look at that on the uh, software and see what the technometer and the OP is saying on that one. Uh, I know he did go live and say we were getting close to that overbought range, so we'll let him discuss that. And really red all the way across the board, except for a few. That would be Aurora Coin up 24%, Steam up 9%, and Bytecoin up 9% as well. Zcash up 6%. Maybe we'll talk about why they're seeing a little push today as well. And then one of our favorites, 0x, is up 2.77%. It was up as high as something like 15% today. So giving back a lot of the gains. And even though you're seeing red today, guys, you got to look back the past week. We are still been slightly stair-stepping higher on these prices. Even with XRP down 13% today, it is still 5 or $0.06 cents higher than before this move. And same with a lot of these other cryptocurrencies up here in the top 25. So keep that in mind. Ethereum Classic was below $10. Now it's still $11.02. NEO was $16. It's still $18.36. So everything can't just go green forever. We're not in that super bull market right now. But if we can just continue to stair-step higher, that will lead us to our end game goal to make some money, stack the bags, and accumulate some wealth. So let's toss it over to Todd and see what he's got going on with the charts, the usual, and then we'll just keep moving forward. Don't have much to go over, really. I mean, uh, kind of went over it the last time I was live. We, uh, I really thought we would consolidate here and have another new high above 6850, 6900. We're getting a little bit deep for that, almost. We're not there yet. 
uh, you know, still to go over the bearish count. We're looking for five waves down off the uh, last high here at the uh, 7,400. So if you're looking at the Elliott Wave, it's 1-2, and we're ready for uh, another decline below 5,700 here. So we're sitting here ready for another spike down, consolidation, and another new low. And uh, again, I'm not really calling for that with the software. I go back to having a lot of support at 6,250, 6,300. But really for the bullish count, it would be nice if we held this... Uh, 65 10 65 20 level and try the upside again so i'm really just kind of watching here and observing you have had you know ethereum at 228 still looks like uh really a one two three maybe off the bottom it's holding in much better uh 215 is a little bit of overlap 192 wouldn't be good so uh Ethereum needs to hold in here within the next $10 or so here, really, to keep the bull count alive. And then uh, Ripple, we was looking for, uh, my technometer was going above 50, really, when we blew through 40. We don't have, uh, I'd set on the update, let's go back to uh, 15 minutes. On Ripple, I really wanted to see this uh, 50 cent level giveaway, which it just did. But uh, my technometer is still around 46, so price looks decent here, but I think it's still a little early probably to be buying Ripple. Or maybe you could add a little bit here and then be prepared to add a little bit more if it tries down to 46 or maybe down to 42 or something. But if Bitcoin's headed to new lows, I mean, all these coins are going to get wrecked hard again probably. Some of them might hold up relatively wise, but uh, and really on the software, my guys have been redoing the software today to try to get it ready for subscribers. So right now they burn out all my requests till seven o'clock. So here in about 13 minutes, I'll have it live again. Really here is from a few hours ago, uh, before the last break, about two hours ago. Technometers are really around 44 on Bitcoin, which is neutral. I'm still showing the support back here at that 6250 6300 uh there really wasn't what else here here's the ripple on the five minute again right before the last little break volume really no real divergences on the ripple so uh again the technometer is 47 an hour ago it's going to be probably around 46 right now so still too early to buy we had ZRX had a decent rally. I did tweet this. It's coming off of oversold. And the OP had been hitting new lows, even up to uh, yesterday's low. So I would think ZRX would be able to hold some strength here and work a little bit higher as well. And that's really Litecoin. Same thing. There is some bearish counts off of Litecoin after making that 64 level. So... Uh, all these coins, I think, to keep the bull kind of alive, need to dig in here uh, tonight and try to hold the gains and uh, turn it back higher again to I'll, keep these charts looking good. So, I'll grab this back, and maybe we'll put Josh on the spot here. I think your microphone's working over there. So what are your three favorite coins, you know, besides Bitcoin, of course, you got to have Bitcoin, and why? Why that these people maybe need to look into some of those projects? Let's see. So three, three favorite besides Bitcoin. Yeah, I might have to scoot in a little closer to that microphone, too. Three, it could be micro cap coins, could be larger cap coins, whatever it is. If there's coins that you think these people need to take a look at and maybe why you like them. Well, I definitely like NEO for the, the China, China angle. Um, so that's one of my top holdings. I like, uh, I like Litecoin. I hold a lot of that. Um, what else? Bitcoin, of course. I really like the cred because I, li I like the the governance yeah, we're, of it. We were talking about that a little bit before, that you just started uh, playing around with some of the staking tickets on DCR and having some success with that, I would assume? Yeah, I mean, right now it's it's uh, it's about 100 decred to, to buy a ticket. And then uh, from there, you can either vote yourself or you can delegate your vote to someone else, which is what I do because I'm not 
uh, we're really a software developer, so I'll let somebody else use that. Um, and then it, it pays about 30% per year, and it, it pays out monthly, so it's pretty Yeah, pretty, nice yeah. Time. DCR is one that I did a review on in the past, and I thought it was really interesting, and they actually have been talking about reducing the amount of DCR you need in order to stake or do pooled staking, which I think will be uh, even more exciting for more life. retail investors like a lot of you guys are, like a lot of us are. And uh, I think that's one that uh, has its has its chance for some pumps here and there. And right now, sitting around in the 30s, I think is one that we need to keep our eyes on. You know, that's usually one that we talk about a little bit, never really jump into fully, and then all of a sudden it's at $120. And we're like, man, how did we miss that 80% gainer? And then, of course, you mentioned Litecoin. You got to like Litecoin. It's been around. It's going to have institutional uh, investors looking at it. And then you liked NEO as well. That is one that I like. I like the fact that you can uh, hold that in Binance and some other wallets and earn that gas is kind of like a dividend payment over there. So Some said they cool. couldn't hear Josh talk. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Probably just a little, little quiet because they just said, can you turn it up if possible? Cool, cool. And Hilton Stone, a $20 super chat, and you don't even have a question or anything in there. Hilton, you got to ask us a question or ask us for a chart or something. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I guess that is uh, to help pay Josh back for these Bud Light oranges and Tito's we're about to be drinking. That's what it'll be for. <laughs> What's up, Dominic? Chris? I guess at this point, real quick, we'll go ahead and do the, uh, the Zen giveaway. Let's do that. I'll flip this back over. We'll do the giveaway from the last live show we did, and then we'll get into some news topics over here. <laughs> Whatever Jeff? secrets Josh was telling, I didn't hear, Taj yeah, says. I, <laughs> I don't have a mic issue. We haven't had that mic on for Those are the best secrets. a few months now. So. What are we giving away here? This is for Zen that we owed from a live show. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We got 157 comments, unique comments. We're going to hit the button, and round and round it goes. Who is going to win this one Zen currently worth, I don't know, $15, I guess. Harry King, really hope Zen that will raise value in the next months. Well, congratulations, Harry King. Whether it goes up or down, you just got a free one. I'll be sending that to you tonight. And that's as easy as it is, guys. So we're not doing a Horizon Zen giveaway tonight. We're actually going to be doing a 4PHR giveaway so if you want to be entered to win four, might be 25, might be 50, maybe 100. We'll see what I decide. Maybe it'll be two winners. We'll just have to see. Leave a comment in the comment section below with your four wallet address. It is trading over at Cryptopia. And if you would like to learn more about the project, I did do an interview with their CTO discussing how they differentiate themselves from competitors such as Particle and why they believed a decentralized marketplace is necessary and helpful for users, sellers, and buyers. So check that out, guys. And let's get into this. Somebody was asking, <laughs> what is the Walmart partnership? I know in the past, there was rumors of a Ripple XRP and Walmart partnership, but it appears some people are gonna be a little angry. Walmart tells produce suppliers to use blockchain by next September. Walmart plans to sell leafy greens that are tracked using blockchain technology within the next year. World's largest retailer announced that it told its suppliers for Leafy Green Produce to integrate a blockchain-based tracking system built in collaboration with IBM by September 2019. Now, which blockchain does IBM Technologies use? Who do they have a partnership with? What blockchain are they built upon, guys? That is Stellar Lumens or XLM. Now, you guys do know that I do like XLM. Uh, for the fact that in order to use their blockchain, XLM is integrated into a lot of those transactions. And it appears that Walmart is hopping on board. IBM has been in contact with Walmart over the past few months, they said. They said this is going to be in, built in two phases, with the first phase uh, starting by the end of next year or being completed and actually used in day-to-day. -day. They said this started out because of an E. coli outbreak that originated from its lettuce. Now, it, it did have a recall and said, hey, any lettuce that was made in this certain area, I think it was Yuma, to go ahead and throw away that it could be contaminated. What's the problem? On the bags, they didn't say in which area it was made. So they plan with blockchain technology, they can then trace all food items. Anybody at home can then download their app, scan the QR code on the back of the bag, and it will tell you the exact location that that food item originated from, therefore saving its customers but really in turn saving the bottom line for Walmart and other stores moving forward because now they don't have to throw away all their tons and tons of lettuce. Instead, they can only target 
the lettuce that has been contaminated by a certain area. So I think that is really interesting. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's still a ways away, guys, about three quarters before this comes into, into play. But once again, IBM has now partnered up with uh, multiple um, 18-wheeler companies, distribution companies, now partnering up with Walmart and others. And again, IBM is being built on the Stellar Lumens blockchain, the Stellar blockchain, which uses its native currency, Lumens XLM. So keep an eye on that. And I know you guys will be like, oh, you're biased. You never talk about Ripple XRP. There was some more good news for XRP. As you guys know, the gaming scene is blowing up, and now you can actually accept cryptocurrencies, in particular XRP, using a program called Coil. So if we set that up, we can accept XRP from you guys on YouTube, or gaming uh, streamers can accept XRP on Twitch as well. Some, some more good utilization for the XRP token, which is nice, because as of now, all these banks that RippleNet is getting on board aren't actually using XRapid, which uses XRP. Instead, they're still using XCurrent, which has no use case or utilization of the XRP network. So keep that in mind, guys, and we'll see what happens moving forward with both of these competitors and try to, try to be unbiased when presenting some of this information to you guys. Along with that, briefly, I have nothing really to read here, but uh, apparently there was a, a, several meetings about blockchain technology with the government and IBM was actually there arguing that the government needs to help uh, and not stunt this growth in this technology. Now, why is this important, guys? Because down here, if we scroll down, a representative from Ripple was also there. Microsoft, which is a tech company that is traded on publicly, guys, that I really like. And I think they're moving more and more into blockchain technology. So if you believe there's still money left in the tech industry, if you believe there's obviously money left in the crypto industry, but have some money in your 401k, Microsoft is maybe one that we can have Todd look at on the software and see if we can find a buying uh, opportunity there. You know, we've made really good gains on companies that have integrated with blockchain and cryptocurrencies, such as Square, such as Overstock, AMD, NVIDIA, and Microsoft may be uh, on the next path to do that and really find another leg up on its traditional stock. And then lastly, of course, IBM was there as well. So again, IBM is in these talks with the government, had some uh, some backing with Walmart, has some other, some other uh, partnerships that we've been talking about, and they are working with Stellar Lumens. That's really all I, about, I got right now. You got about, what, four minutes left until your uh, software resets? That's cool. So we'll just chit-chat and see what's I'll, going on. I can on. take an hour to show a couple things because uh, I did want to show the Ripple again because... A lot of people will use Wyckoff by buying uh, springs and downtrends and selling up thrusts, selling up thrusts and downtrends, buying springs and uptrends. So, we this is a uh, the 0 0.491 was a previous low here, so we did just spring that. So for the bulls on Ripple, you know you could buy it right here on Elliott Wave. Normally you find support at a previous fourth wave, which is this triangle here, and that comes down to the 46, 47 cents. So, uh, you know, I'd like to see a, my technometer get a little more friendly. That's why I, I tweeted about the other day. I'd like to be able to buy a uh, oversold technometer. We're not going to get that yet, but uh, that one might be good enough. There's Bitcoin back at 6,600. So, this is for Hilton Stone's uh, donation that. Uh Had to give you the pork blast to release Hilton. If you're not going to ask us a question, not going to ask us anything, appreciate that. I think I was scrolling through looking for something you said, and you said you, you've got your fill in the past, so all good. Really appreciate that, and uh, thanks for tuning in here on a daily basis, and thanks for that. Appreciate it. Super chat. Now in front of us is the uh, UUP, which is a dollar, long dollar ETF. You want to give me the screen yeah, there? that back. Jim Bob. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting... Uh, I think I mentioned this this morning when I did the Wyckoff stock video because here this morning the technometer came in around 36, which is oversold. And then we had a little bit of a rally decent for the day back to unchanged. But the technometer is all the way back to a sell quickly. So I still think the dollar is headed down. If the dollar heads down, I would think that keeps the wind behind the cryptos. That's what we keep saying. So, uh, you know, maybe that doesn't allow these cryptos to break hard here below that 5,700 level. I'm not sure. Could be interesting. And then quickly here, a lot of times Taj will ask about Square. Square had uh, kind of sprang the previous low, which again, by springs and uptrends, you would have wanted to buy Square off of that spring. 
and probably still could buy it and use a stop at the low at 81.50 or so. <laughs> so that's something to look at. What's going on over there? I just read a chat. That's funny. Wonderful Block said, banks will switch from X Current to X Rapid to save even more money. That's really what XRP holders uh, really need to be rooting for. Now, the problem is, will it actually happen? I can't tell you. Obviously, that's the point of investing. If you believe it's going to happen, then now is a good time to buy. The only issue with that is uh, Western Union has utilized both X Current and X Rapid and publicly said that they did not see the savings uh, as far as switching to X Rapid really offset the opportunity risk as far as having to actually hold and use XRP, which obviously is volatile since it is a cryptocurrency. We'll see what happens moving forward. Maybe people think there will be a surge in cryptocurrencies and that using X Current will be beneficial both for them saving money and also if they hold XRP that it can also go up in value as well. But again, that's just uh, something we'll have to wait and see. Until then, we'll just keep up to date with the integrations and whether these partnerships are actually going to be using XRapid and XRP or not moving forward. Here's CLV in front of us. Hugo, I think, mentioned that when we first came on. You know, that's one that, that Nick had liked, and we talked about really around 12, 13, 14 holding. And it kind of did that with everything falling apart. It has uh, not shown a lot of strength here uh, you know, in the last few weeks. So I don't know. It'd be nice if that one wasn't back down here below 10, below the uh, 10,000. So uh, all in all, it still looks pretty good, but uh, show me to my Chris Canine donating a dollar 99. Josh, what's your pork blaster micro coin pick for Q4? I'll give you some time to think about that. And then I don't know if that microphone's working or not. So you can come over here and, uh, and, uh, Shill your coin to Shill Chris Canine coin. over here. <laughs> For the buck 99. And by the way, guys, you know, we've never met Josh before. Josh is a crypto private client group member, so obviously we've had some conversations with him, seen him on here, seen him on Twitter, whatever it may be. If you guys are ever in the St. Louis area and want to hang out, want to meet up, maybe want to stop on the show, maybe you have a segment you want to talk about, you're more than welcome to do that. We'll have you on. We'll get you set up. And maybe you can convince us to drink some... Uh, alcoholic orange juice as well and uh that's it so All right we'll call it shill your coin day yeah shill your coin day if you're ever in st louis you get to come on here shill, shill your, your coin coins. for five minutes during the live show sell them out for a quick <laughs> quick flip uh, all right i got the software back up now like clockwork seven o'clock uh not much to say i mean bitcoin as i mentioned uh this is bitcoin usd technometer got close to the 50 level to give us a little bit of a sell but didn't reach there. Uh, the OP isn't really giving us any major sell, so I don't know. You know, it might be back like a 7400 where uh, we got close to a sell. A 6500, I got close. So, uh, you know, I, I'm. It's kind of I think a coin flip here whether we're headed down one more time or whether we can hold here this evening and try the upside. I would like to see in a rally to 6900, and then see how we fall off of that would be what I'd like to see. There's Bitcoin USDT. Let's see how quick the software can bring this up here. This will be much quicker once they move over to my Amazon server and my uh, WebSocket. I think I've got a WebSocket that allows 10,000 connections at once. We'll see. Uh, yeah, see the technometer here never got above uh, 46 and change on Bitcoin USDT. So now we're down to 44. So not really, uh, you know, no real hard reason to give a sell. I mean, I had to buy back at 61.94, which was over here. And uh, obviously it's nice to get a buy and a sell, but we're gonna have to see, uh, we're gonna have to wait for that one looks like. I'm gonna bring up XRP next. But let's go back. Uh, let's go back to ZRX real quick. That's one. But Nick might have flipped that for a little bit of profit. Yeah, well, it wasn't too much. If you follow me on Twitter, you could have followed a swing trade I did with the laddering out, laddering in. But really, I hop back in because there is somebody trying to buy 14 Bitcoin worth of ZRX all at one point. Now, obviously, this could be flashed on and off the order book, but it was getting very close to that. So I kind of lost my nerve, hopped back in, made a few coins, but nothing really to brag about. Uh, obviously, 
the, the software is saying to be long here on 0x. This is one that is part of my long-term portfolio, so usually I don't swing trade those. But since it did just have that straight bar of green candles, I thought I would uh, kind of test my luck and just use a ladder. And if I lost it, I wasn't trading against the dollar, so I wasn't going to be holding in cash. I was right. doing it in Bitcoin. That way, if 0x wanted to run and I lost half of my 0x holding, I was still in Bitcoin, still in cryptocurrencies, as I am still very bullish on cryptos moving forward. And any trades I'm doing in this kind of band that we've been seeing has all been with Bitcoin only because I don't want to be standing in cash when these things decide to turn around. I don't want to be chasing these or FOMOing it into any of these projects. So you guys got to decide what kind of trader you are, day trader, swing trader, hodler, whatever it may be. But uh, personally right now, I'm trading more with Bitcoin just because I don't want to get stuck in cash at these levels. And then we had Z Classic in front of us because that had to move from 340 to 420 and then... Uh then all the way up to 490. So it's back to 433 here. And uh, those people picked that up on the uh, fork with, uh, what was it, the Anon? Yeah, we, so yeah. We, there was a ZCL $2. Anon fork that I was telling you guys about. And every Z Classic you held, you actually got two Anon. So uh, one of Todd's clients, actually, I'm not going to name a name, but he was looking at Z Classic around $5. I think he bought a substantial amount for a master node. Uh, you now break even on the Z Classic, plus you have two Anon that you can put on a master node, and is trading around a little over two dollars, or about two dollars. So that's a hundred percent gainer right there on that fork. That is going to have an opportunity to pay off with some uh, passive income. Now, why is Z Classic pumping? Not always positive. Kind of will uh, entail with what I'm about to talk to you guys about with Vitalik and the scaling solution, because the Z Snark technology is also in Z Classic. But I did make it public that Z Classic does have a new dev team coming on board, and you always have the opportunity that somebody might fork it again in the future. So that's why I think people, it really didn't have a big sell off there. It st stood strong around $3, and uh, down around those levels, it was just holding in, and people are just going to speculate on what the future is for that project moving forward right. as it sits around $22 million market cap. So it has a lot of upside left in that thing, too, as well um, with future development. Here's the XLM still holding in pretty well. That's the one we were showing on the park, pork blaster. So backing up a little bit here, but still uh, chart looks pretty good there. That might be one of Josh's, who knows? He mentioned that a minute ago. So that might be a smaller coin he likes. And then let's throw up uh, EOS. It ran to 630 there pretty quick, back down to 565. That's one I would think is trying to put itself together to continue higher. And then let's, for the heck of it, let's show Decred. We haven't looked at that one in a while. It's been kind of quiet down here at 36. Currently 37.53. So I haven't brought that up in the software either. So we'll have to look at that here in a minute. I say let's Josh give us his. Yeah, come over here and use this mic shill, in case that mic's not working. Shill micro cap. Hop in here. This is for the $1.99 Super Chat from Chris K9. Ask Josh, or our visitor who just happened to be in St. Louis, what his micro cap or small cap coin for Q4 will be and maybe a little reason why. All right, guys. My micro cap coin is No Limit Coin. Uh, it's about a $3, $3 million market cap. Uh, I play poker on their platform uh, almost every day. It's really fun. They've got uh, a fantasy sports uh, site as well. Uh, and they're also going to be early next year forking onto a fork of EOS, which is, I don't, seems fairly exciting, but I'm not sure quite sure what to think about that. But uh, it's definitely a risk there. But it's three million market cap, so that's interesting. Well, I've, I've looked into that one a little bit as well. No limit. What is the ticker? What is the ticker on that? NLC two or something NLC like that. NLC two. What? Uh, what's the major exchange that that thing trades on? Do you know? Um, it's on uh, Cryptopia and I think it's on Bitrix. Bitrix yeah, and Cryptopia, Bitrix, NLC two. Hit B and Yobit. So on NCL2. some. NCL two. Let's see if I can do. So on some pretty major exchanges. Let's see if Todd can pull up a chart for that. There you go, Chris K9. NCL2, no limit coin. Check it out. You wanted his opinion. There it is. He threw us a micro cap. You asked for it. You got it. Been in a downtrend, so we got it down here pretty cheap. 
couple couple strange uh, high volume bars there too. Yeah, definitely. Some major high volume red bars down there didn't too much the price. Oh, there you have it. That is it. Sweet. I got one more news thing I want to talk about that I know you guys have been wondering because obviously it's in the title. This is the Ethereum scaling solution. Vitalik says Ethereum can scale to 500 transactions per second using Zcash technology. Remember we said Zcash was seeing a little bit of a pump. This is probably why, because the technology within Zcash might be used or replicated by Ethereum moving forward. Maybe this is another reason why Z Classic is seeing a pump as well, because Z Classic, if you guys did not know, is actually a fork of Zcash. There is no code difference between Zcash and Z Classic, except that the founder rewards are turned to zero. So we've talked about Zcash in the past and why it's not really my favorite privacy coin, and I, that is because their treasury or founder's reward per block is 20%. I think that is a little excessive for the amount of marketing, the amount of innovation, and the amount of use cases for, Z, for Zcash. And that's why for large cap privacy coins, I really like Monero, which uses a different privacy function. And then as far as Znarks are concerned, I have moved towards Zen and Horizon because Zen is actually a fork of Z Classic, which is really Zcash. I know it starts to get convoluted, but essentially Zen is code, opcode from Zcash and has that technology built into it as well. So let's talk about this. Obviously, 500 transactions per second is not the end game for Ethereum. There's already competing protocols that say they have more transaction capability. I know Johnny M. Cool is probably over here talking about EOS. I like some others as far as Ethereum Classic is concerned and some of their sidechain solutions they're working on. But let's see what Vitalik has to say here. So the Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin has a plan to scale Ethereum network to accommodate a 3,200% increase in transactions without the use of a second layer's technology such as Plasma. We have all known that sharding and Plasma and Casper has all been promised for Ethereum for a while now and it just has not come to fruition. Maybe they're close, some say they are, some say they don't. We'll see what happens, but I believe if Buterin can actually uh, implement the ZK Snark technology to improve the scalability for Ethereum for now at least, that it might slow down the amount of market share that it is giving up to some of its competitors. Uh, Buterin estimates that the integration and adoption of ZK Snarks could allow Ethereum to process a maximum of around 500 transactions per second, up for the, from the current cap of only 15 transactions. You want to know why CryptoKitties put Ethereum to the halt and increase the cost for transactions by so much? That is because it can only transact 15 transactions per second. That not only represents a 3,200% increase in network capacity, but also accomplishes the feat apart from Plasma and other second layer scaling solutions that increase network cap capacity by moving the majority of transactions off the main blockchain while retaining its security. If used in tandem with second layer technologies following their eventual, we've been waiting forever guys, their eventual loss, the scaling improvement would be even more pronounced. So we'll see what it means here for Ethereum moving forward. I think that if Bitcoin gives up some of its gains here and Ethereum has a massive sell-off, that this would be a prime opportunity to get back on the Ethereum train. Although I've talked in the past that I've been reducing my Ethereum uh, amount in my portfolio and switching to some competitors such as NEO, Ethereum Classic, uh, Knowles, Lisks, Dragon Chain, and, and the list goes on and on, really, Ubik. I believe if Ethereum can finally put something positive together with the coming institutional money that will have access to Ethereum through Coinbase Custody and some of these other uh, outlets, Grayscale, Gemini, etc., that this could be the positive news leading into a bull market that could send Ethereum surging and really remaining firmly at number two on the market cap. We did see that during the, the Ripple or XRP pump, it did briefly pass up Ethereum. And uh, I'm sure that doesn't matter to Vitalik, but I know it matters to a lot of you guys. So we'll see what happens moving forward. It is definitely interesting. Now, I don't think they're adding privacy. I mean, if they're adding ZK Snark, there's going to be the capability of having transactions that could be shielded or private, but I don't think that is really what they're striving to do here. Instead, use it almost as a relayer to put some of these transactions off the main blockchain as a sidechain solution, and that way there will be more throughput for all these dApps, ICOs, etc., that are being built on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Keep up to date. 
pretty bullish news. Negative red bars on the charts. And like I said, if Bitcoin gives it up, say Bitcoin goes down to 6,200 and Ethereum has a negative 10%, I think that would be an opportunity that I would be willing to risk to re-increase my Ethereum position and hope that Vitalik uh, can do his thing over there. Now, lately Vitalik just really has had his foot in the mouth uh, almost as much as Elon Musk has had with Tesla, and that's really affecting the price. But uh, nonetheless, guys, like I, for the reasons I just said, I think it's one to keep an eye on if we go a little bit lower. One question we need to answer, bud time there, wants to know how long the three of us have traded cryptos. I mean, my answer to that, I've been only in cryptos for, well, like 22 months. I mean, my background is stocks, commodities for uh, 40 years. I've been in cryptos in between, t I think a little over two years now, maybe two, not quite three years. Uh, just, I've heard about it a long time ago. It was really through World of Warcraft, my friends. Uh, we're playing World of Warcraft, saying to get Bitcoin. Unfortunately, I did not get in there because that was when I was still, that was like right when it came out, 2009, 2010, did not really get involved. I actually started dabbling and trading and mining probably a little over two and a half, three years ago or so. So I've been here for a while, seen a couple of these market cycles, uh, seen some of these bull markets or bull markets, bear markets, et cetera. So we've been here doing that. And like Todd said, he's been trading traditional stocks. What about you, Josh? How long have you been involved in cryptocurrency? I know you're more of a techie IT guy. Uh, you're talking to me more about how you're setting up VPSs and masternodes, et cetera. Did you really just get involved with cryptocurrencies at the height of it, or were you in it a little bit before? Probably about 2014. So he's actually been in here since 2014. Man, if you bought some of that during that bear market, you should be looking pretty uh, good right about um, it. I bought some Bitcoin in 2014, and then I sold it. Oh, uh, I don't know if you guys heard that. He said he bought Bitcoin in 2014. Got excited probably off a tiny pump or might have sold it for the red, but he did sell it and he's here back. So Josh, I guess if you're asking that question, you asked how long all three of us have been buying, trading, whatever, uh, looking at cryptocurrency. Josh is just here visiting. He is actually part of our crypto uh, private client group and he's just stopping by. So usually it's just me and Todd here. Obviously, if we go over to learncrypto.io, uh, it shows everything that we have to offer from a cryptocurrency trading course, a cryptocurrency beginner course crypto private client and really gives the a background on all of us links to our Twitter accounts, LinkedIn accounts, all the information you may need. And I've done Wyckoff almost what I took it in 82, I guess it was. So what was it? Ronnie Moss. Is that his name? Moaz. Moaz talking about uh, proprietary software and actual proof of trading, et cetera. So I've used the Wyckoff software and method and uh, have placed a national real money competitions I'm going to say seven or eight times every time I entered in something. I tried to do that years before to prove that the Wyckoff method worked and I knew what I was doing really for, you know, for jobs or to get money to manage, et cetera. So the Wyckoff works. Uh, obviously, this bear market in cryptos has been uh, a whole different animal to trade with, with the 10x gains and the 90% losses. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan, obviously, of Wyckoff, own the institute. And I've been known to do some Elliott Wave Theory. And then No Name says, what up, peeps? Who got the Walmart partnership? Uh, we talked about that, so you might want to rewind it. But Walmart did partner with IBM in their blockchain division, which is going to be built on Stellar, utilizing Lumens, XLM, the native currency for the Stellar blockchain. So another integration for IBM, another partnership for IBM, who has already uh, kind of pronounced devotion and loyalty to the guys over at Stellar Lumens. I, uh, XLM USDT, which I got the chart here. I mean, I th that one looks like, uh, I think that's one you want to focus on if we get a little bit further pullback here. Technometers at 42. I think that one looks good. And then, uh, I know I've seen, uh, some LA wave on ADA. That does look like it's done, uh, a good impulse wave off the bottom. Our technometer's a little bit overbought, but I think ADA, uh, could still look good here in the future. So. And I think Jet said, is ETC the next Bitcoin? No, I would not say that. Those are two totally different sectors and use cases for cryptocurrencies. Now, if you would have said, is ETC the next Ethereum? Maybe then you have a discussion there. Um, I've talked about Ethereum Classic and Ethereum in length, so I'm not going to go really too far into it. But essentially, Ethereum, ETC is not a fork of Ethereum. And if anything, Ethereum is a fork of Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic is still running on the original blockchain that was Ethereum. It wanted to maintain immutability, and uh, Ethereum and Vitalik did not want to do that. There was a DAO hack, which lost about $30 million in funds, in which Vitalik and 
the higher beings or the centralization or whatever you want to consider it there decided that they wanted to return the funds and uh, that's kind of where the split happened. Charles Hoskinson, during the interview with him, he is actually the co-founder of Ethereum with Vitalik. That is why their relationship split up. Charles Hoskinson went on to rewrite the code of Ethereum Classic and put a million dollars of his own money into Ethereum Classic and trying to solve some of these scaling issues that Ethereum is finding now. So we'll see. You know I hold a lot of Ethereum Classic. I mine Ethereum Classic, and I really think it has a bright future with being listed on Coinbase, Coinbase Custody, Grayscale, etc. And... Uh, if you really believe in the decentralized nature, immutability, and non and can't be uh, replicated as well in blockchain technology, Ethereum Classic has maintained those things, while Ethereum kind of has a haze. Right? You know, it's kind of in the gray area there as far as its history and what it's done in the past, reversing transactions, redeeming funds, etc. So you got to generate your own opinion on that, but. I like what Ethereum Classic is doing with their partnership with Cardano and Zen and these sidechain solutions here in the future. But no, it will not be the next Bitcoin because that is a totally different sector. Bitcoin just dropped 100 down to 64.93 low. 65.20 currently. So Seems like we got some people in here talking about NLCL2. So talking about your micro cap over there. They're going back and forth with you. And then I got one more thing I wanted to bring up. Why did ZRX have a nice pump today? Well, ZRX did announce the launch, launch of their new protocol version 2.0, has new upgrades and interoperability with some of these new ERC token types, ERC20 tokens, ERC721, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Besides that, why do I think this is important? Now, although some of you might look at me and say, hey, getting listed on Coinbase doesn't really matter. Look, it didn't do too much for Ethereum Classic, etc. Well, it hasn't done much yet because it is the bear market. I still think Coinbase is the most popular and highest volume fiat onboarding platform in the world. Very user friendly, very beginner friendly and doing all it can to generate more and more partnerships and allow institutions to invest in the coins that are on its platform. Now, we do know that Coinbase did buy... Uh, what was it, Paradex, who is a relayer on the ZRX, ZRX protocol. Now, Coinbase did then say, hey, ZRX is on our shortlist for assets that may be listed. And now version 2.0 has come out, which will, uh, some improvements, but allow for more ERC to tokens to be traded on their relayers and on, on separate DEXs. In my opinion, this might be what Coinbase was waiting for, this recent update. And we'll see what happens. Guys, they bought Paradex, which is a relayer on ZRX. Right now, ZRX doesn't have much of a use case because a lot of these decentralized exchanges, a lot of these relayers aren't actually charging fees in ZRX. But the future being is Coinbase is a for-profit company. A for-profit company is not going to offer a trading service through Paradex for free forever. And the easiest fee to use is going to be ZRX. They can then add ZRX to their, pro their platform to provide liquidity both to Paradex and to Coinbase Pro. That's where I'm seeing the connection. That's why when I did the Coinbase video, what coins I thought could be added to Coinbase four months ago before they even bought Paradex, that is really what I thought they would be doing. Uh, in order to, get, to not have to list all these coins on their exchange, they could have ZRX, have all these ERC-20 tokens available to their users, add ZRX to the platform to provide liquidity for those users and have another tradable asset that actually is going to be generating revenue for Coinbase overall. So we'll see what happens moving forward. I'm still very long term on ZRX and I see all these relayers, decentralized exchanges and Coinbase being involved with them. I think that's a no brainer, but the real value proposition is going to be coming when these exchanges actually start charging a fee in ZRX. I know some people don't like that, but that is what the world is. This is a capitalist society and for-profit companies are going to generate revenues one way or another. And you should be happy if you are a ZRX holder because that is what is going to drive network utilization and price increasing of that token. So that's about all the news I really got. So we'll just kind of hang out here, see if you guys have any questions. If you guys have any charts you want Todd to look at on the trading software over there, any traditional stocks you want us to look at. And really, we're just kind of hanging out here with Josh. My beer has gone. I got a little water left and we'll see what's going on. Obviously, the football is going on tonight, so we'll see. I know a lot of you guys were saying that you thought the Bucks were going to win. Is that what you guys were thinking? Ripple just did a 46 and change. Whoa. Down to that triangle support. A little deeper spring, so. Got an uptrend line maybe at 45-ish, 44, so. 
If you need any ripple, I guess there's your chance. 6545 Bitcoin. Interesting. Litecoin held that 58, kind of. We made the 57 and change earlier, so a uh, little out performance there. Ethereum 224.68. Still not overlapping, but two uh, down here at 215 or so, which I think wouldn't be too pretty if that does happen. I've seen some Elliott Wave guys I respect. What was the high on ADA? I mean, there's some big numbers out here. They still think that these coins have done huge wave fours and some coins have done one twos, which means the biggest parts of the rallies are yet to come. So I don't know whether we get just another barn, bl barn blaster again, pork blasters everywhere. I don't know. It's going to be interesting what the next five or 10 years brings. Wu Feng Dung says, been long Ooh. tether since 8,500, waiting for a 4,200 price target. Wu Feng, I think sometimes you might just want to be like, man, that was a pretty good trade. Maybe you should start laddering back in at these price targets. I would hate for you to make a great trade, get to tether at 8,500, and then we don't quite get down to your 4,200 price target and we go to the moon and you are left here on planet Earth. I know that's not what you want. <laughs> so left maybe you might want to use, use some of these ladders I talk about, maybe put 25% back in Bitcoin at these levels if we continue to drop ladder in that way. It will be a lot less risky if you're bullish for crypto markets moving forward. Waiting for 4,200. Interesting. G Money says, do not, and I see eye to eye on ZRX. Can't wait for its full potential. And then Eduardo says, are any ETH pairs looking good? Eduardo, I don't know about Todd, but I really don't trade against Ethereum. Like I, I said, I don't either. have near as much Ethereum in my portfolio, so I'm definitely not trading in and out of that. I use USD, USD Tether, and Bitcoin trading pairs always because if I, quote unquote, lose a trade, I have no problem sitting in Bitcoin. The software is done working for myself. I mean, they're in the middle now of taking it to uh, a super web socket and my Amazon server and hooking it up real time. So I asked them today if they had an estimate. They didn't reply to me. So I know they're working on it today. I would think in just a few weeks, they should tell me they've got it done and then I've just got to get it implemented into my site and make it available for subscription, which is kind of stuff that Matt did for me. I've got a gentleman here in town that probably can do it, but it shouldn't take very much longer. The software, I mean, it is working. It's a little slow because we're drawing it from the API and we're doing thousands of calculations. So they're just trying to get everything now just cleaned up, working faster. And for those of you who are tuning in late, we did give away the Zen already from our last live show. And instead of a Zen giveaway today, we are actually doing a four giveaway PHR is the ticker trading on Cryptopia. So leave a comment in the comment section below with your four wallet address and you will be entered to win. Make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, I just don't know what you're doing. Make sure to do that as well. And it's as easy as that. What else we got going on in here? Luis Garcia says Vertcoin just did a spike. He's right. It was a two minute spike from uh, 67 oh. to 77. Whoa. And right back down. Well, don't know what that was. What's up, Gary O'Connell? Vertcoin is one of those interesting ones, and I'm actually going to be doing a video on Vertbase. We've talked about that. They were upset they couldn't get on Coinbase, so they went ahead and made their own exchange. It is a fiat onboarding platform that literally looks exactly like Coinbase, but only trades Vertcoin. So I got some uh, early access to that from their development team over there to check out, and maybe I'll uh, do a little video for you guys to check it out as well. Definitely an interesting coin. It's competing with Digibyte, Litecoin, Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer cash as of now. Obviously, Digibyte is doing some things with DigiID and with security, which I think differentiates it from just being a like peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. Uh, but it still kind of falls in that same sector. And uh, they really pride themselves on being an ASIC-resistant proof-of-work mining coin. And really off the highs, might not be a bad one to jump into at these low prices. Right now, I own a little, but I did mine that. So... Maybe I'll take a look further at that chart or Todd Kane. I'll see if there's any kind of price objectives moving forward on Vertcoin. They are doing a lot of marketing soon, guys, and they do have Vertbase, which will generate revenue to their treasury, which they can then use for further development and marketing as well. That's the problem with a lot of these uh, coins and solid projects that have been around a, a while, like uh, Digibyte as well. They didn't have an ICO. 
So they are all donations, volunteer time, etc. And by them creating products and exchanges where they can drive revenue, that's when they can continue to develop and market their projects and get it really uh, strive for the end game goal of mass adoption for each platform. Flush Aru, not sure what you're talking about on extorting Matt. That's kind of months ago. So, uh, Flush Aru says these guys telling people to scale in. We're about to go in the toilet. LMA, 4K. They'll be saying scale in. Well, at least you got your there name you go. right. Flush Aru toilet. <laughs> flush Aru for the crypto market. That's <laughs> flush Aru. <about> flushed. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. What else we got? You got anything you want to you want to talk about, Josh? You want to come over here and talk about anything? You just kind of hanging out. Is ready to grab some food probably maybe a drink here in a little bit see what's going on do you guys have any more fundamental questions any comments concerns any charts from todd if not we are now sitting a little over an hour and we really went through those news articles talked about the giveaway said what the software is looking like and uh if we drop another hundred dollars bitcoin is looking like we are going to have a little bit of a dump so we'll just have to wait and see jet wants you to look at dogecoin if possible Dogecoin. Hold on a second. I got it here. I'm... And then Yakisoba Man says, who is the guy hanging in the back? That is Josh. Josh is one of our crypto private client group members, and he just happened to be in the area. So we decided to swing on by. So he's just hanging out here. Probably hang out with us a little bit after the show is over. We don't have Doge in the software because I just don't trade that one. Flush Roo said, when is Todd going to make a good call? Obviously in here trolling. Somebody deleted it. You can leave it because we really don't She'll care. Leave it up. If you watch the I'll show slap him. each and every day, you know the calls that are being made. Follow us on Twitter, whatever it may be. Flush Roo, congrats. Hopefully Bitcoin goes to 4K so you can actually own any cryptocurrency because we know those <laughs> bags are empty. <laughs> right. Your name should be Empty Bags. <laughs> uh, I wish you'd leave those up because I like the comments. John West says, if cryptos are indeed manipulated, who decides when the bear market ends? <laughs> is, is it the exchanges, the whales, or the new institutions coming in? I think it's probably a combination of all. Not really exchanges, in my opinion. There has been rumors of exchanges trading on the market. Some of those have been proved false as far as Coinbase is related. I think right now the whales are really driving the market, but also I say institutions and media. Because right now, institutions, even Golden Sox, has been fudding on Bitcoin forever, calling it a scam, calling it a drug coin, whatever it may be, while they've been building a trading desk in the background. They were afraid of missing uh, the boat. They want to build a way for them to generate revenue, and then they're going to go ahead and push cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin onto all the clients and investors like yourself in the traditional markets. That way, they are making gains, revenues, profits off of that. So I think it's just kind of a little bit of everything. And we'll just see what's going on. Right now, I think institutions are starting to dabble their toes, but they have all the retail investors that pushed this market so high on the fritz. If you notice, go to any YouTube channel, go to crypto Twitter, go to any, you know, any projects Twitter. They have 100,000 followers, but only about a couple thousand that are active right now. A lot of retail investors have been shaken out, and I really don't think they're going to come back into this market as far as buying power is concerned until we pass up that $10,000 mental barrier. Once we break 10,000, media is bullish, all these traditional finance companies, institutions are all pushing Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. That's when people will really come back to the table. And that's when we're going to have the next cycle and next bubble in which we need to try to capitalize on. Joe wants to know, what about setting up Cardano nodes come January? For you, Josh? What do you think about setting up? Have you looked, at, have you looked into that or anything? Cardano. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't looked really into those as much either. I know that uh, Charles Hostinson during our interview mentioned those, but I really have not looked into the technicals as that's still a ways away. I don't even think there's even a number of ADA tokens or ROI listed out there, really the purpose of the nodes quite yet. So we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, we got a few months to brush up on that before that, about four or five months before that even becomes a reality. So we'll keep you up to date <laughs> on that as we move forward. Flush a root is Matt. Uh, when are you going to get type back on? That's something we talked about with Nick. What's the time frame on there? So their KYC ends in four days, and then their token distribution is on October 14th. Uh, Alex said after the token distribution has been completed and they have an update as far as uh, something they've developed something, they're going to come up on here, discuss how the ICO went, how even though they didn't meet their soft cap, they decided to move forward with the project, talk about the token distribution and what the roadmap moving forward looks like. 
Um, if you guys are not verified for type yet or have any questions about Typerium, go over to their uh, Telegram channel. That is where all the admins are active, where you can, you can catch up with Dean and Alex and a lot of the team members over there uh, and make sure that you get verified by the 28th. Now, if you're worried because you haven't been verified, guys, I haven't even been verified. I've literally interviewed the founder, purchased ICO on the day it started, and I have not been verified. If you put over a certain amount of Ether into the ICO, they're trying to remain regulatory compliant, so those actually have to be approved by their lawyer, so we are kind of last on the list. They have completed 80% of their KYCs, I think they were saying, 20% are left, and those are all people who had over a certain amount of Ethereum put into the ICO. So there what you go. Habit. Let's make it clear with Flusher Root. So he kicked us off to the curb. <laughs> His channel was grown by myself and the good calls we made. And then it was grown by Nick doing reviews on big coins. And then it was grown by Mitch Ray. So he's not getting hardly any more views than we get. We got good solid subscribers here that are trying to make some money and trade these cryptos. So, so yeah, go to Matt's channel, go to bitblaster.io with two or three people there. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. So it's obvious Matt's not wanting to do much in cryptos. That's why it never worked for us. He's wanting to just have his own uh, podcast. So, so flush your root, keep talking. And Crypto Kiwi says bank will, banks will use XRP. Hey, we'll see. They are making partnerships with RippleNet and they are using X current to start to see if that can replace Swift. And obviously the next progression would be to switch them over to X rapid, but Ripple benefits either way. You got to keep that in mind too. Ripple, the company will benefit from X current use or X rapid use. So whatever means keeping the clients and making them happy is what they're going to push. I'm sorry to tell you, but they pre-mined XRP. So although they own a bunch of XRP and want that price to moon, if they can just keep these banks on with X current, they'll be happy with that as well. We're going to see the progression there. You know, it is getting more and more bullish for XRP. I'm starting to see some of these partnerships and starting to like it. But as of now, we have not seen any proof that X Rapid will be utilized. I know that in a few weeks or a month or something, they have their, uh, their Ripple conference. What is it called? The Swell conference. And a lot of people are looking for them to make some big uh, integrations and utilizations of XRP announcements there. I think that's in mid-October. So keep an eye on that. If you think they're going to make good announcements, you know, I've said it in the past, whether you like XRP, don't like it, it does have a really good community, a lot of followers, and always pumps in price. It's really just timing that bottom to get ready for a pump, and we'll see what happens. Like I said, I think the Swell Conference is mid-October, so you got about three weeks before that. Maybe we can catch an oversold indicator on the software and get positioned for a little rally here in, a, in a XRP moving forward. Flush Haru just said buy IOTA to 90 cents. <clears throat> oh God, IOTA is the worst cryptocurrency out there. I told him to buy Bitcoin at 20,000. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the dumbest comment. Oh my God. First of all, all the subscribers come from a bull market. That's where subscribers come from. Lam Lamy J says bull run for XRP <laughs> over the weekend. Swell is actually October 3rd and 2nd. So you guys only got about 10 days or one week before the Swell conference. We'll see what happens going into that. And one more thing I want to say too is it's pretty obvious what I say about everything. I do videos like all the time. I give price predictions. I give comments. So even if you're 60% right, 70% right, that's all you need to do. So anybody worth their weight in trading is going to have uh, numerous losers. So that has nothing to do with it. So, uh, you know, we were in Bitcoin at 1800. That was the first point. 1900 was my first real buy on here. I mean, uh, we were doing Ripple at 14 cents, et cetera. So, and I'm still here trading and will be. Red, Red 5 Golf Gunny says, it's not a pre-mine. You can't mine it. It was just created. You just read the definition of what a pre-mine coin is. It was just created out of thin air and then distributed based on their distrib distribution methods and decisions. That's what a pre-mine coin is. Uh, and it makes no sense for a company to lie, Ripple to lie about shit and risk being charged with fraud. They don't have anything in writing that X rapid utilization must happen. They said that they project it to happen and want it to occur moving forward. But just because they say that doesn't mean that it will become a reality. Let's get off the XRP token discussion because some people love it, some people hate it. That just is what it is. And Gary says, Nick, you were just negative with XRP and will always be. <laughs> I know there's a difference between 
you have to decide what you're long in your portfolios and what you're trading in your portfolios. XRP is a trading cryptocurrency for me because I do not believe in the ethics and the fundamentals behind it. So yes, I like to try to buy buy, uh, <laughs> buy red, sell green on XRP. Like I've discussed here, we've given price projections where I bought at 45 cents and we sold at 90 cents. That's what happens with that. But XLM, I like long term. So that's when I don't really trade as much. You got to decide personally what coins those are for you. And uh, no matter what you think of a coin, there's always an opportunity to sell a pump if if it presents itself. 65.50, not much going on here. Toss it over the chart real quick and kind of wrap this up, I guess. What you got going on over there on the software? Not yeah, much. Looking at Bitcoin, not much else. Not much else I'm looking at for real. I mean, it's funny, the trolls said I was a scam for not having the software and now the software's done, so you know, now they got to find something else. So the software's working fine and uh, it will help us as we move forward. That's all I can say. What's up, JP? My software's Whistler. trading view. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this guy's going to have to go. He can't even argue very well. All right, well, that's probably about all we got. Do we have any more questions here? Crypto Hunter says, how is Linda? Linda is really just sitting right around here at, I think, 15 Satoshis. I haven't looked at it. And uh, just doing its thing as far as the, you got the my node pool, you got the my staking wallet for opportunities to stake uh, for 70% on master nodes now, I believe, and probably around 50 or 55% if you're just a staker. If you need more help with that, you can always DM me on Twitter. I can help you get set up. And uh, they do are about to be doing uh, marketing here soon. They signed with a marketing agency to market Linda and Linda X, the ICO they were doing over there as well. So. Stay up to date with them over on their Twitter if you are interested in that project. Or check out the interview I did with them. It is a little outdated, but you still understand the overview behind the token econo economics behind that project. All right. What else we got? Is that about it? Gary, what's your says, tin F banger? That guy just trying to cause problems. Yeah, it's, pr it's probably uh, somebody that we shouldn't name because it's probably his account. And that's about all we got, I guess. Bye, mofos. So until next time, guys, stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies. Don't be afraid to buy some Bitcoin around here, although you think it might go to 4,000. If it doesn't and we rally above 10, you're going to be feeling a little upset. You guys are the ones hitting the buy and sell, not us. So the final decision is up to you. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the news, the fundamentals today, and the charts over there. And of course, uh, Josh was over here, told us what three coins he likes as well as the microcap coin. Thanks for visiting us here in St. Louis, and maybe we'll see some of you guys here in St. Louis soon as well. Leave that 4PHR wallet address in the comment section below, unless your name is Flusheroo, because if you win, I'm just going to keep those <laughs> coins. And until next time, we'll be here tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Love you guys. Uh, hit that like button, and that's all I got. You got anything, Todd? <laughs> no, peace out. Oh, hey, hey, stay positive, pal. Most people, when they lose, they whine and quit. But you got to be there for the turns. Everybody's got good luck. Everybody's got bad luck. Don't run when you lose. Play hard. Play clean. Be careful out there. We'll see you all again. Sleep tight. <laughs>